In order to train as hard as possible, you must retain a clear image of your purpose. Once your goal is sharply, but realistically defined, all that remains is carrying out your plan. Don't, however, worry about your individual potential. Potential is only the expression of a possibility, something that can be assessed accurately only in retrospect. In other words, you'll never know how good you might have become unless you try. So let's get with it. Good morning. Oh, as a lot of you guys probably saw, I'm no longer working with Rise. I put on my Instagram story, maybe not a lot of you guys know, but we are now partnered with Huge Supplements. I'm gonna get into all the details and shit like that later in the vid, but if you guys do wanna cop anything from them, try any of their pre-workouts, you can use code Nick, save yourself some money, support my vids, all that good shit. So basically, I bought another drone. And a lot of you guys might be thinking, Nick, don't you already have a drone? See, with this one, this is the one I've filmed all the drone clips you guys have seen on my channel. This is the Mavic 2 Pro. It's more made for high up, smooth flying shots, you know, level with the horizon. You don't really get close to shit with it. It's just like 
smooth, easy flying shots. All the type you've seen in my videos. Whereas on the other hand, this drone is known as an FPV style of this drone. I think, I think it stands for first person view. But this one is more maneuverable. I'll, I'll, I'll throw up a clip of like someone else flying it. When it comes to flying this, it's more of like a learning curve thing. If you're trying to fly it and get the max capabilities out of it, you fly it in manual mode where you're you're in control of the whole thing. They have like easier ways of flying it. Like there's like this Wii remote looking bullshit where you just point where it goes and it's super easy, but you don't really like get the full capabilities out of it. You want to learn it with a controller and manual mode and all that shit. Whereas this drone is very easy to pick up and fly and get dope shots out of it. Like any of the Mavic drones from DJI. If you guys are looking to get a drone, DJI, DJI is kind of like the Apple of drones. Like they just make it really easy to use and simple. But yeah, so this one has like sensors on all the sides. It's super hard to crash. Whereas this one, if you're, if it's gonna crash, it's gonna crash and it's like, it's up to you. And the reason they call it an FPV drone, first person view, is because you actually wear these goggles and you see what the drone sees while you fly it. It's kind of like kind of like a VR headset, but you're like just flying the drone. And since there's more of a learning curve to this, I'm not gonna have any drone clips from this in this video. Probably the next vid though. Um, they have like a flight simulator where you put this on and you use the controller and you fly it, but like in a simulated reality. Yeah, hopefully I can get some dope shots for you guys with this. I don't know. Maybe I'll suck at it. It's possible I crash it the first time I fly. Like these are a lot easier to crash, but it's a little cheaper and easier to replace. Eventually I do want to get like a GoPro and attach that on there because one of the flaws is like the camera's kind of shit on this. I don't know, we'll see. But uh, yeah, that's my new drone. Hopefully I can learn this so I can add some more to the videos. That's, just, that's the plan with it, but maybe I'll suck at it. Yo. So why did I end up switching from Rise to Huge? So first, working as an athlete for Rise isn't really the best situation because they're. it seems like athletes aren't really a priority in terms of like where they're going with the company. It seems like they're really focused on things like retail, going into Walmart, shit like that. And there's just like so many stupid little things like you guys always hit me up complaining with how long the shipping takes because they take like five days before they ship out the package and then you gotta wait for the shipping and I know this because when I order my subs from them it's the same shit like it takes like two weeks to get there which is it's just annoying like when you buy pre-workout it's usually like oh I'm almost out of pre I'm gonna buy the next one and it's like wow this takes two weeks I'm out of pre it's just shitty that kind of just puts me in an awkward situation because it's just like you guys hit me up and it's like where's my package and it's like man I wish I knew you know I'm just I'm just an athlete and then there's like other little things like they email out and text out discount codes that are worth more than athlete codes, which kind of gyps the athlete because people are gonna use those, which is dope for you guys, you guys save more money, but as an athlete, um, you make money when people use your commission code. So when they're doing things to get people to not use your commission code, you don't see any return on that, even though maybe people are buying Rise because of that. So it kind of just sucks as an athlete. And I really feel like they just focus on making their products marketable instead of making like a dope pre-workout. You know, they focus on like, the flavor collabs and you know not too many ingredients that are gonna make like a super dope pre-workout and they just like jam it full of caffeine put a really good flavor on it and then that's you know make it really marketable that's their thing and i've always told you guys flavor doesn't really matter to me and that's pretty much their main priority most of the time now on the other hand with huge they really do focus on making just some dope formulas i like them in my opinion i really think no, you guys shouldn't just buy a pre because I say I like it. Like, you know, maybe read the ingredients a little bit, see if it's something you fuck with, but I like it. Now I was talking about how Rise just jams a shit ton of caffeine in there. I like stimulants, but all they do is caffeine versus like, this is their main pre-workout. It's called Rect. It's like the one that has everything in it. Pump, focus, stimulants. You know, it's, it's just like well-rounded. Um, this has three different stims in it. Just dope and you can really feel it. It has area Jurensis extract and I don't, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's similar to DMAA, but I've researched it before. It's supposed to have like more of a euphoric feeling instead of like a crazy cracked out feeling that DMAA has. They also put glycerol in it, which is an ingredient I really like. I really feel the difference when a pre-workout has glycerol in it. It, it. like 
you feel the muscle fullness. It like hyperhydrates your muscles. They feel super full. And I like it a lot. And they don't put that in any of the Rise pre-workouts except for one of their pump products. But they have it in the pre here, which is nice. And if you guys are wondering why it comes all like rocky like this, you can just smash it up with the scooper. But that's because of glycerol. Most companies don't like to put glycerol because it makes that like rocky feeling. It's, your pre didn't go bad or anything. That's just, what it, that's just what the ingredient does. They also have Rect and Raged, which is like their heavy stim pre. Um, if you're looking to have something that's like just get you cracked out, maybe you're trying to hit PRs, I would take this. It kind of reminds me of the OG Got a Rage, if any of you guys have taken that. Um, I'm not taking this today because we're just in like a normal push day, but I take it for leg days because this doesn't have any pump in it. Um, and I don't want to pump on leg day. It usually just makes the lift uncomfortable. And then I'll take this before deadlifts because I want to be fucking cracked out of my mind when I'm trying to hit the heavy deads. But yeah, that, that's this. This is dope. Um, but we're not taking that today. In terms of flavor, I've told you guys that's not something that really matters to me. I mean, it tastes like your normal, like, good tasting pre. It tastes like, tastes like pre-workout. Um, if you guys are looking for flavor reviews or what's the best flavor, you know, maybe look at someone else's content. But yeah, I really fuck with their formulas. If you guys do want to try them, you can use code Nick to save some money and support the channel. But yeah, um, I'm going to catch you guys at the gym. Peace. Hear me out, baby. Like everyone else, and one of these days you're gonna wake up to find that your dreams faded pretty quietly over the years. Now their absence is so loud. What's up? So I did a little single with 320. I honestly thought I had 325 loaded up, but that's my bad. So we're gonna top up there. I kind of want to try to hit 315 for a set of three. Yeah, um, let's see what we got. That was shit. Even though we kind of flopped on that, I still do feel kind of strong today, especially comparatively to recently. For some reason, bench has just been trash. Like, you know, I just gotta like, keep getting like knots in my back, and it just feels like shit. But today, it's like it's kind of like back to where it was. So, I'll take it. All right, 275 is kind of moving, but I was sitting here thinking about what's wrong with my bench technique. Like, I've been like, it's kind of just been off lately. I've realized what our issue is. When I'm benching, I haven't really been focused on creating a higher touching point. And a lot of you guys might be thinking, Nick, what the fuck does that mean? So when it comes to bench and you're trying to create like an efficient arch so you can bench more, you really want to focus on opening up your rib cage and kind of like bringing it to the bar to create a higher touching point. It's gonna give you like a better place to bench from. And I was really focusing on that for a bit, but then I kind of forgot for some reason. So I'm gonna try that for the next set, get, that, get a better arch, see if it helps. That definitely felt a lot better. It was way cleaner than my other sets, and I was I was able to keep my glutes on the bench a lot more. What you guys know is like, was a common problem with my bench technique. Like maybe it came off like a centimeter on like one rep, but other than that, it was really solid. A lot of people out there think arching on bench is cheating, and everyone's like arching to some degree. But you know, because someone can do it more, their arch cheating, and yours isn't. That's kind of like their logic. But when it comes to the sport of powerlifting, it's completely legal and legit in the sport, so like how could it be cheating if it's actually allowed? Even those extreme arches you see, you know, you really can't hate on the person for doing it if it's allowed within the sport. It's like, why would they bench less and, you know, make their technique less efficient just to like, what, like look cooler or get validation when they could be a better athlete by doing that. And everyone at the top of powerlifting, like the best lifters, they're all making their technique as efficient as they can, whether it's a big arch or not. They're doing what they can to bench as much as they can. Kind of like how in basketball, whether it's a full court shot or right at the three-pointer line, 
they both count as three points, like maybe the full court shot is a little cooler, but as an athlete, it makes more sense to be at the three-pointer line because you're going to make it way more, you know, you're going to be a better athlete and you're going to win more games. Really blame the athlete for doing something that's going to make them do better in their competitions. You know, maybe, maybe you can hate on the rules, but other than that, like, I wouldn't hate on people for doing it. One thing that is cheating is my glutes coming off the bench. So like you guys could say I'm cheating on bench, but someone who's arching and doing things within the rules, not really cheating. But yeah, creating that higher touching point definitely helped my bench. So I think we're gonna do it like I said. That's a wrap. I always hate when you unlock a new piece of your technique for a certain lift and it makes it feel way better, come more comfortable, stronger, all that shit. And you just forget that shit. And it's like, now you gotta re-unlock it by just remembering it later on. We did 275 for a five by five, so we got some pretty solid volume in. I think I only recorded four sets. But yeah, that new, focusing on creating a higher touching point definitely helped my technique feel a lot better. Um, if you guys are, you know, if you guys are trying to make your technique more efficient, you know, just try to think about that while you're benching. I never really got into incline dumbbell benching. You know, like a lot of people love it. I never really got into it, maybe because I like long arms or some shit. But lately I've been doing it a lot and it's been feeling pretty good. I've, I think the most I did was the hundreds for a set of six, which isn't anything crazy, but you know, I'm happy with it. But yeah, we're gonna do that. Have you guys ever seen those videos? I get them on TikTok and Instagram sometimes. It's like a video of LeBron squatting. And it's just like the most atrocious squat form you've ever seen. One thing that I find kind of crazy is like whoever is coaching him to squat like that is probably making like a stupid amount of money. In an industry like that, it's all about connections and who you know. Cause like that guy coaches LeBron in lifting or whatever and now it's like he's LeBron's coach. So it's like he gets all these other high profile clients that'll pay a shit ton of money because he's known as that, you know? It's just like, gives him all that validation. And I know some of you guys might be like, Cody's squad is for athleticism, but he's, even if it, he is doing it for that, like his back is like crazy hyperextended and it's like, it's just a improper way to squat, whether you're doing it for athleticism or not, you know, it's just not the right way to do it. And someone is getting paid like, ton of money to have him do that, which is, which is kind of crazy to me. It shows that shit isn't really about what you know. Same sort of thing happens in the fitness industry. Like people will get a lot of followers and clout and they'll have a good physique. And it's not really because they have a lot of knowledge, you know, 
a big part of it is they have good genetics and they'll use that as a marketing tool to sell coaching, even though they have no experience, you know, no credentials to be selling coaching whatsoever. But people buy it because it's like, oh, I look up to this person and they have a good physique. That's why I wouldn't sell coaching or anything like that. Maybe if I had credentials and experience behind it, but people just get followers and they're like, oh, I'm going to take advantage of my followers and sell them coaching, even though I should probably have no business doing that. But that's that's what a lot of people do. I was watching one of Max Tuning's podcasts. If you guys don't know who he is, he's like an older fitness influencer. And he said all his friends would tell him to like start up coaching because he's leaving a lot of free money on the table. But he said he never did it because he didn't feel it was morally right to sell coaching because he didn't have like the credentials to do it. Like like someone like him or me, like I know how to lift and stuff like that. But just because I can train myself doesn't mean you can train other people, if that makes sense. These higher up influencers that have like shit ton of followers and sell coaching, they use their face to sell the coaching and then they pass it off to someone else, like someone else does the coaching in place for them. Kind of like how you've seen on TikTok how the OnlyFans girls will say it's not even them replying to the dude, that's some other dude that's getting paid for it to respond and act like they're the girl. Same thing happens in the fitness industry with coaching. Not everyone. Like there are some seriously legit coaches that know what they're doing and they deserve like all the clients they get, but there's other people that are like straight up scamming people. But that's just like one thing for you guys to know. If you guys are ever looking to get a coach or buy programs from someone, don't do it just because they're your favorite influencer or someone you look up to. Make sure there's credentials and experience and shit like that behind it. So you're not just wasting your money and getting a cookie cutter program and someone who's kind of just using you for money, you know? It doesn't have to be your favorite influencer. Get someone who's gonna give you your money's worth. I don't know. I'm gonna see you guys at home. Yo. I hope you guys enjoyed the vid. Um, let me know what you thought in the comments. Um, let me know if you're like messing with the style of the vids. If you're new here, maybe subscribe and check out some of my other vids. If you like this one, you'll probably like the other ones. But yeah, I'm hyped to start with huge. I hope you guys like them like I do. Um, if you guys got questions, hit me up on Instagram. Hopefully I can help you. But yeah, thanks for watching the video. If you made it to the end, you're a real one. Code Nick on huge and young LA. And I'll catch you next time. Peace. Like in that part.